Okay, we're, we're pleased to have Siu Cheong Lao from Harvard University who will tell us about SYZ. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm very excited to learn a lot of connections and miraculous con uh, connections between uh, knots and uh, mirror symmetry. And so let me begin with uh, the starting point of this miraculous condition, namely uh, the conical, which uh, perhaps everyone here is very familiar with. So, uh, so by this picture, uh, what I mean is uh, the cone over the square. And this is the fan picture for the conical. So this is conical, the basic conical. Um, and here uh, the generators are uh, so zero zero one and, and well let's write it here zero zero one and one <coughs> zero one zero one one and one one one. Yeah. So. Everyone must be very familiar with this figure. And uh, this is the so-called fan picture for the conical. And it is convenient to draw it uh, on a plane uh, because it, yeah, somehow it's uh, more uh, convenient. And, um, and uh, the political picture is just taking the view uh, of this uh, fan picture. And uh, so we have uh, two descriptions. One is uh, a complex description, one is a synthetic description of the conifold. And of course, uh, we can write down the equation. So uh, if we take the deal, it is somehow looks the same, same shape. And the generators uh, of the deal uh, has four generators. So x, y, z, w. So let's label this by x, uh, y, z, w. And then uh, the equation for this conical is simply uh, is xz equals to yw. Uh, well, just because uh, x and z is in opposite direction and y and w is in opposite are in opposite directions, and when you add them together, they are just the same. And so we have this equation: xz equals to yw. And uh, conical transitions uh, is uh, two operations uh, involve two operations uh, on this conical. Uh, one side is a smoothing and one side is a resolution. And uh, so uh, if you do a triangulation that corresponds to resolution uh, of this conical, so this corresponds to resolution. Uh, again, I'm just drawing on a plane, but indeed uh, you can imagine that you are doing an operation uh, in this uh, three dimensional cone. And that corresponds to uh, O minus 1 plus O minus 1. And uh, on the other side, you can do a smoothing of the conifold. And uh, that is just deforming this equation. This is singular at this uh, point, conifold singularity. And you do a smoothing, you just deform this equation. So you, you add a parameter t here to make it smooth. And uh, so, uh, well, there are some other pictures, non conic pictures, uh, to show uh, this smoothing, uh, but I'm not going to draw here because uh, it has already been shown in some other lectures. Um, so, so uh, and these two are related by the so-called conical transitions. And uh, the aim of this talk is talking about uh, the uh, strominger yang flow construction uh, for this sort of conifold transitions uh, for toric club yang manifold. So this is for this is for this toric club yang, and we want to do it in general. Um, so so this side is toric, and this side is not toric. And of course, uh, then uh, you may ask, uh, what is the motivation for doing this? And uh, we have already several lectures uh, talking about uh, a lot of uh, things about it. Namely, uh, uh, for example, in Fuji's talk, in Professor Fuji's talk, um, so he talks about uh, if given a knot inside uh, S3, then uh, you take the conormal bundle in C T star S3. Uh, uh, by the way, so this guy is T star S3. You can identify it uh, with the cotangent bundle of S3. So uh, you take a knot inside S3, and then uh, you take a conormal bundle construction to construct 
a Lagrangian inside T star S3, non-compact one, and then uh, you do a Kung Fu transition, uh, so namely you blow down and, uh, 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 sorry, you, uh, so you let T goes to zero, so you contract the S3 and then blow up, and uh, then you get uh, a Lagrangian, Lagrangian, non-compact Lagrangian, inside uh, uh, this uh, O minus one plus O minus one, And uh, somehow, uh, uh, well, by mirror symmetry, um, again, H alpha. So uh, then, uh, then uh, uh, the knot uh, theory here has a miraculous correspondence, uh, conjectural mir miraculous correspondence uh, to the curve uh, U B equals to some f here, some polynomial here, and. Uh, and uh, so we learned this uh, from Fuji's talk, and this is uh, perhaps in, in, uh, uh, this is one of the motivations uh, why we are interested uh, to study uh, the mirror symmetry between uh, uh, between uh, uh, well uh, uh, kung, uh, this kung fu and uh, uh, and this gravia uh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, today we will just uh, do the unlock case uh, uh, be, uh, uh, and generalize uh, the construction to a uh, uh, general toric minimum. So this is one of the motivation. And uh, other motivation uh, is like a homological mirror symmetry uh, that uh, Professor uh, Siebert, uh, Chen, uh, and also uh, uh, and, uh, Professor Anderson uh, has talked about. So a uh, homological mirror symmetry uh, between uh, the conical side uh, for its resolution uh, and uh, the local cloud yang sign, local cloud yang, you be namely this situation. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so there's the reference relation uh, between uh, uh, namely uh, the Korean sheaves uh, uh, on on this uh, local uh, on this uh, toy cloud yang, let's say, and uh, 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 lattice points or. Or the branching sections are uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, UV equals to F, uh, which is uh, discussed uh, by Professor Anderson and uh, Professor Chen. Um, uh, of course, this is a different context, uh, but uh, we are still interested in this kind of miraculous relations. So, uh, so how to do the uh, uh, SYZ mirror symmetry then? So, uh, so we are doing the SYZ con uh, construction, and that needs a Lagrangian vibration. So. S Y Z needs the Lagrangian vibration. Uh, so let me recall a little bit uh, what is S Y Z construction. So S Y Z is the name of three person: uh, Stroming, Jue Yao, and Zasno. And uh, the construction uh, is uh, consist, uh, consists of uh, these three main steps. First of all, you uh, construct a Lagrangian vibration. Construct Lagrangian vibration. And uh, and the second step is that uh, you take the t t duality to get the du uh, Lagrangian vibration. So to get the du Lagrangian vibration. And the third step is the, the most crucial step uh, for uh, quantum corrections. Namely, you have to count uh, contributions from holomorphic disks in order to compactify this dual Lagrangian vibration. So this dual vibration is not uh, the correct one to consider, and so you have to do some correction, and that is uh, coming from disks counting contribution from disks. So this is uh, a synthetic realization of the Stroming J Yang Zaslo uh, construction. So this is synthetic construction. On the other hand, uh, Gross Siebert uh, has uh, an algebraic construction, algebraic realization uh, of uh, the SYZ construction. So algebraic construction or tropical construction. Algebraic tropical construction. 
And uh, namely, uh, so this uh, construction of the Brunjian vibration is replaced by construction of uh, toric degeneration, whose construction is much easier in general. So that's why they prefer using a tropical approach. One, one of the reasons is that uh, toric degeneration is easier to construct. So instead of construct Lagrangian vibration, you construct toric degeneration. And uh, the TDRT is basically uh, the Legendre transform on the base. So TDRT is replaced by the Legendre transform of the base. Uh, I'm not uh, going to be detailed uh, on uh, this. Uh, I'm just uh, going to have a quick review uh, on this construction. So give you an uh, overview on uh, what are the main steps of SYZ and uh, the two main uh, uh, realizations uh, in these days. So, uh, so in their construction, TDRT is, uh, uh, is like a Legendre transform. And quantum corrections uh, is given uh, by scattering diagram, basically. So, so order by order scattering order by order scattering, wall crossing and scattering. Wall crossing and scattering. So the advantage uh, of this algebraic tropical approach is that uh, uh, it is rather general. Uh, so toric degeneration, basically given hypersurface, you can construct a toric degeneration. And uh, also, order by order, wall crossing can be explicitly computed. So this is uh, the advantage of the algebraic uh, tropical construction. On the other hand, uh, synthetic construction gives you a uh, direct relation with synthetic geometry. So algebraic tropical construction uh, gives you relation to tropical geometry, which is supposed to be equivalent to synthetic geometry, but that is uh, not true. And so uh, uh, synthetic construction also has the advantage that uh, it is uh, directly re related with synthetic geometry. And, uh, but uh, the disadvantage is that uh, it is not general. So it is rather difficult to carry out it, uh, this uh, rigorously. And, uh, but here, uh, for this kind of examples, conical transitions of polyclavial manifolds, indeed, uh, it, the geometry is not too complicated, and so we can carry out this uh, synthetic construction. So we will use this approach instead of the uh, algebraic tropical construction. So we will use a synthetic construction here. Right. Yeah. So what is the Lagrangian vibration then? Well, in this case, uh, it is rather easy to construct, and uh, in general, it is constructed uh, by Gross and uh, uh, independently Goldstein. Uh, so uh, it is Gross and uh, Goldstein. Uh, so, so Lagrangian vibration. So in this example, it is rather easy to write it down. So let's uh, write it down explicitly. Um, so remember that uh, we have four coordinates uh, on four coordinates on the conifold uh, x, y, z, w. Uh, then we just use uh, we want to pro uh, we want to construct a projection to r two times uh, another coordinate r. Maybe so. So this gives a projection to r three and. Uh, so let's denote this uh, conifold uh, or uh, this resolution, it doesn't matter, uh, by x. Yeah. So this is the conifold x. And uh, let's call it uh, x tilde, the point resolution. So we want to have a Lagrangian vibration for uh, x or x tilde to uh, this uh, uh, R3. And the first two coordinates are just given by basically the moment map. So you do the moment map, so x tilde moment map vibration on the cone, and then take a projection, and that, that's it. And that gives you a projection to R2, right? It is already drawn in R2. So uh, explicitly, that is given by long x squared minus z, long z squared, and then, uh, and then long y squared minus long w squared, for example. So, uh, so this is the first two coordinate, and the uh, last coordinate is given by uh, this uh, uh, particular complex function, holomorphic function, uh, on, on this conical, xz, or yw. So you use xz to project, uh, uh, normal xz to project to r. 
or you can modify it a little bit. Let's say uh, xz minus 1 take norm and project to r in a symmetric again. So uh, then this vibration would be a Lagrangian torus vibration. So the fiber would be torus. So the, the key point is uh, uh, how you choose the last coordinate. If you choose the last coordinate uh, to be like real part, so, so this part can be modified. If you, if you like, you can choose it to be, you can choose it to be real part of xz. Then, uh, then the fiber on the xz plane is like uh, the horizontal lines. If you choose it to be this one. The fibers in the xz plane, so this is the complex xz plane, if you choose it to be real part of xz, then of course when you fix real part of xz to be constant, then these are, these are the fibers. Um, and then you notice that these fibers are non-compact, then it is like a, a, a two torus times these fibers, and that is related uh, to uh, the original Lagrangian uh, that uh, Fuji has talked about. So originally we consider non-compact Lagrangian, and indeed these non-compact Lagrangian fibers are those non-compact Lagrangians, basically. Um, and, and we don't want uh, to use non-compact Lagrangian because uh, we want to take T duality. So T duality, we want uh, a T3 vibration <coughs> in the original SYZ approach. And so we, we are not taking this uh, real part of XZ. We are taking uh, XZ minus 1 take norm. So this is somehow proper verification of the vibration. So instead of taking this, then we are just taking the circle, right? So here it means uh, the fibers is basically circle centered at 1. And that's it. So this direction also becomes compact. And so this is uh, this vibration. All right. And that's it. So this is the Lagrangian uh, uh, torus vibration constructed by uh, Gross and Goldstein. So we have the Lagrangian vibration for the SYZ construction. And it is just the same uh, for the smoothing side. So X, either X tuner or the smoothing, uh, call it Y. It just has the same coordinate. So or you can do it for the smoothing, uh, let's call it Y. Or uh, let's call it uh, XT. Remember that XT is defined by U, uh, defined by XZ minus uh, 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 YW equals to T. And you still have this coordinate to consider uh, x z norm x squared minus uh, norm z squared and norm y squared minus norm w squared, and also it also has this uh, coordinate x z. So it is just the same projection to give you the Lagrangian torus vibration. So you have that on both sides. And now, uh, now let's uh, take uh, the t duality and quantum corrections. Uh, so what's that? So first of all, let's uh, have a picture of the Lagrangian torus vibration. So the picture is the following. So if you do this projection, so you have a vibration on uh, R2 cross R, or indeed uh, the last coordinate is bigger than or, or minus uh, 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 zero. And then, um, and so you have uh, a picture on the upper half space. So this is the upper, upper half space, and so I'm drawing the basis uh, of uh, the base, uh, this upper half space. And uh, you notice that uh, the discriminant locus for x tilde is the following. So I'm drawing a picture for x tilde over this uh, base, uh, R3. So the discriminant locus are all lying uh, inside uh, a plane. And the discriminant locus uh, looks just like this picture. So it is just uh, a cross. Or if you resolve it, then uh, it is this picture. So recall that we do a resolution here. And the dual figure is this, is this one. And that is the discriminant locus. You just move this uh, discriminant locus on to this plane. And that's it. So this is the discriminant locus of the vibration which means that this is the place where the torus degenerate with criminal loci of the vibration. Yeah. And on the other side, uh, so this is the picture for x tilde, 
On the other side of the picture is the following. So let's call that X, uh, XT, right? So this is the smoothing side. On the other side, you are still mapping to the upper half space, so the space, uh, so the base is still upper half space. But uh, the uh, discriminant locus separate into two strata. So one uh, is uh, lying in uh, this plane, and one is lying on the another plane. Another plane. So uh, so so these both of these are the discriminant loci. All right. So discriminant loci. So the dotted lines shows the discriminant loci. And uh, so uh, from this vibration, you already already see the geometry here. Is that uh, so this? The, the, uh, the inverse image uh, of this dotted line contains uh, a P1, and that is uh, this uh, uh, O minus 1, the, the base of the O minus 1 plus O minus 1. So this is the P1 here. So we call that this is uh, O minus 1 plus O minus 1 over P1. The, the fibers are only circles so over those points. Is that what uh, well, the fibers are not only the circle, but it contains the circles. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then uh, and here uh, uh, the S three is here. So we call that this X T is basically P star S three. And here the S three is uh, located in this vertical line. So this is why it is Lagrangian. So this P1 is holomorphic because it is along this direction. But uh, this uh, S3 is a real section. It is Lagrangian section of T star S3. And that is uh, because it is vertical to this discriminant long side. And so this is the S3. So the conical transition is contracting this S3 and then you blow it up uh, to get P1. So this is uh, uh, the vibration picture. And now uh, let's uh, consider the quantum corrections. Actually, what are the fibers? Are the fibers all toroid? Yeah, the generic fiber are all toroid. Generic fiber are toroid. So, so if you take any point uh, away from the discriminant loci, then this is just T3. Obviously, but what yeah, are but they? if you generate uh, along this, uh, this discriminant loci. Yeah, and do you know what the fibers are over those? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, so along this, uh, then, then uh, it is like, uh, so it is like a T2. Uh, so it is T2 like T2 times S1, except that uh, the T2 degenerate to S1 on the other side. So this is the singular fiber at the discriminant locus, at, at, at the generic discriminant locus. And, and it further degenerate at the vertices. Yeah. So, so you see this discriminant locus, locus uh, uh, consists of co-dimension 2 and co-dimension 0 strata. And so the, this, and the uh, singular fiber differ. Uh, uh, from here to here. So for, for this fiber, for, for the fiber over the dimension two uh, low, uh, strata, stratus, then it is uh, this. Then it is uh, that the two torus degenerates to a circle uh, on the other side. All right, is that clear? And then uh, when it goes to uh, uh, dimension three strata, then it becomes this picture. And it is uh, then this circle further degenerate to a point. So so. Yeah, uh, indeed, it is all contained uh, in uh, topological, like uh, topolo uh, topological mirror symmetry considered by uh, Gross. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we want to consider uh, the quantum corrections now, namely uh, the counting of disks in this particular example. So quantum corrections. Okay, uh, so the key point are the following. So key point is uh, wall crossing, so called. Wall crossing is the key. So it is the following. We consider a uh, Lagrangian torus away from the discriminant locus and consider a uh, disk bounded by a uh, torus. So we consider disks, holomorphic disks, holomorphic disk bounded by a torus bounded by a Lagrangian torus fiber, Lagrangian fiber, smooth Lagrangian fiber. And the key point is that on the wall, 
this counting is not rather well defined due to the uh, uh, due to the mass so called mass of zero holomorphic disks emanated from the discriminant locus. Remember that uh, the generic fiber is smooth tor smooth torus T3. And when it goes to the discriminant locus, one of the torus shrinks to a circle. And hence there is a circle which shrinks. And that's form a disk. That forms a holomorphic disk. So when a torus shrinks to a circle, then the circle fiber wrap, uh, 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 swaps uh, a, a holomorphic disk. And that is a uh, 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 mass of zero holomorphic disk, so called. Uh, uh, it has mass of index zero. And these disks will make uh, the definition of open homomorphism in various mixed accounting not well defined along this wall, because these disks are, are all contained in this uh, plane. And so counting on this plane is not well defined, but counting above the plane and below the plane are well defined. So, so we consider holomorphic disks bounded by the branching torus fiber above the plane, and above and below the plane, below the wall, so called. So the wall here, so this is the wall. This plane that I draw is the wall. And here we have two walls. So we have two walls. So wall number one and wall number two, let's say. So we consider counting away from the wall. Okay, so this is the first key point. We, we are not going to, uh, so counting on the wall is not well defined. So let's separate into two chambers, separate, separate the base into two or three chambers in these examples. And then uh, the second key point is that below the wall, below the wall, if you consider the branching torus below the wall, then the thing is, by maximum principle, uh, it is just the same as counting inside uh, T, uh, C2 times C because uh, by maximum principle the disk indeed is not is, is contained in the lower part or in the uh, inverse image of this lower part it cannot exceed it cannot exceed this wall by uh, maximum principle and hence uh, if it is just this counting inside C2 times C then there is only one disk so the key point is that the lower wall Below the wall, there is only one disk. Only one disk. Yeah. And that is my maximum principle. I'm mainly concentrated on X tilde, but uh, yeah, the, the explanation for XT is similar, and I will discuss that later. So, uh, so for x tilde below the wall, then it is just one disk. So it is for x tilde. X -tilde. And uh, another key point is that above the wall, so this is basically like the uh, last key point, above the wall, then, uh, the whole, uh, then the fiber is just Lagrangian iso isotopic to the toric one to the toric, uh, fi uh, toric uh, fiber, and uh, uh, there is no holomorphic uh, 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 mass of zero disk uh, in the Lagrangian isotopy, and hence we can simply identify this torus above the wall uh, to the Lagrangian torus fiber of the moment map. So above the wall, uh, Lagrangian torus fiber, torus fiber is just identified with uh, fiber of the moment map. Fiber of the moment map. And, uh, and uh, uh, recall that the moment map is a projection of x tilde to uh, a polytop, which looks like this. Yeah. So it is a three-dimensional picture here. So whose two-dimensional picture is this one, right? I'm just drawing this into three dimension. And, uh, and so you have a vibration of x tilde to this moment map fiber. And so torus fiber can be simply identified with moment map fiber of this vibration. So, yeah. so how did you think about revenue how you get this ball? Where did it come from? 
Yeah, the wall comes from that uh, because uh, the, uh, uh, of the mass of zero disks. Yeah, so you consider the fibers which bound uh, holomorphic disks of mass of index zero, and those those points form the wall. Form yeah, union of those points form this wall. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you you, you consider those points, and uh, and these are the points where uh, the Lagrangian torus fiber has no well-defined open homomorphism in Okay, yeah, thank you. And so that forms a chamber structure. And this chamber structure below the wall and above the wall, the behavior of the disks are totally different. So below the wall, there is only one disk. Above the wall, it is like uh, the moment map. It is like uh, the moment map vibration. And so uh, if we want to discuss this above the wall, it suffices to look at the moment map vibration. And so let's look at the moment map vibration now. So, so on the other side, you have two walls, but you get them in the same way? Uh, yeah, so I mainly concentrated on X tilde. But uh, yeah, on X T, you will find that uh, the, 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 uh, the, five, uh, the base points uh, whose, uh, uh, fiber does not, uh, uh, whose fiber bounds a uh, mass of index zero disks are uh, consisting of these two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's look at the moment map. Uh, well, let's draw it this way because perhaps this is uh, uh, more difficult to draw for the disks. So I'm just projecting that picture to a plane. And uh, you notice that there are four facets here. So there are four facets, four facets. And we want to consider holomorphic disks. So I have identified torus fiber of X tilde to the fiber of the moment map, all right? And we consider holomorphic disks, and it is uh, the result of Cho O that each facet corresponds to one holomorphic disk of mass of index two. So holomorphic disk, so each holomorphic, each facet corresponds to one holomorphic disk. And so there are four facets, and so there are four holomorphic disks. Let's draw it this way. So there are four. Yeah. Uh, so these are called basic one, basic holomorphic disks, because they are corresponding to the facets, and they have a, a mass of index two, which are the disks that we count. And then, uh, so so uh, then above the wall there are four disks. So we call that this is the wall. So below the wall there is only one. Above the wall there are four. And uh, the four uh, can be written as, uh, let's say, uh, so, um, so, so below the wall there is only one, so there, there is only one disk, and uh, each disk corresponds to a, 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 a monomial uh, in the mirror side. So, so this, if you take the mirror. So each disk corresponds to a monomial, and that's called this the, the corresponding monomial to be W. Alright. And above the wall, there are four. There are four disks here. And so uh, they correspond to four monomials, right? So if you click the mirror, then it corresponds to four monomial, and that is given by uh, Wx plus uh, let's say yeah, w, Wx plus uh, W. Uh, y w times y plus one plus w times uh, x y and indeed there is a parameter uh, called the Kähler parameter which corresponds to uh, this sphere. So recall that if the uh, pre-image of this segment minus segment is uh, con contains a holomorphic sphere, and if you consider the size of the holomorphic sphere, it corresponds to a Kähler parameter q uh, called q. So it corresponds to a Kähler parameter. Let's uh, denote that by Q, and then uh, and then the Q uh, will appear here. So this is uh, Q, and then W times x y. All right. So the wall processing is this one, and you notice that this. Uh, sorry, this is W. I'm writing it, <laughs> and you notice that it can be factorized. W can be pulled out. And that's it. So you notice that uh, below the wall and above the wall differ by a factor. 
this is so called uh, we call this a uh, wall crossing factor. So this is the so this is the effect of this wall one plus x plus y plus q x y. Yeah. And then you use this uh, generating function of this counting to uh, uh, to be one of the homomorphic coordinates in the mirror. And you do the uh, uh, like uh, the usual algebraic construction, just taking spec. Then uh, you get the mirror to be u v equals to one plus x one uh, plus y plus q x y. And that is uh, the construction uh, for this uh, x tilde for this uh, uh, o, o minus one plus o minus one sign. Is that uh, well at least conceptually clear? Perhaps. I, I'm not uh, doing the uh, detailed discounting, uh, but I'm just uh, showing the key points of this argument. Can you say one more how you, get, how you got this equation? Yeah, so you use this as one of the coordinates. So, so you see that this is this serves as a function uh, on the so-called semi-flat mirror. So this serves as a one of the function. And uh, you, you also consider other functions, uh, 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 generating functions. And, uh, and then you take the spec, then you will get this one. Yeah, but you, you need to use some other function. So this is just one of the functions. Yeah. Okay. So this is the mirror, and then uh, you just uh, do the similar construction here, except that uh, now you have two walls, and the analysis of this uh, difference because this is uh, not toric, and but again you just use maximum principle to uh, separate the analysis. So you consider uh, the branch and torus fiber here, uh, so that the disks just. Uh, just supported in uh, in the inverse image of uh, the, the part here, and then uh, you you uh, and then you do the similar analysis, and then you get that you get that indeed uh, there are so for fibers here there are only one disk. So so now let's consider x t now. So this counting for x t. So you consider this counting for xt for the smoothing. So we have done the resolution, now let's consider the smoothing. And there are three chambers now. So two walls separate the thing into three chambers. And again, below the two, so in the bottom chamber, there is only one disk, again by maximal principle, and that corresponds to the coordinate w. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, if you cross this wall, you notice that uh, the discriminant locus, the discriminant locus in this case is just a line. And uh, the wall crossing factor for this part is just uh, 1 plus y. It turns out that so it's it, it, it's easy to guess, right? Because uh, it is a horizontal line here. One corresponds to a constant point, and y corresponds to a mass of zero disks in this uh, in this direction. And so this is one plus y, and uh, the wall crossing factor for this part is one plus x. Because uh, again, one corresponds to constant disk, and x corresponds to the mass of zero disk uh, in the horizontal direction. And so 1 is 1 plus x, 1 is 1 plus y. And so the wall crossing is just a w, and in the middle it becomes w times 1 plus y. And uh, uh, crossing again this wall, then you get 1 plus y, w times 1 plus y, and times 1 plus x. Right. So this is the wall crossing, which is rather similar to this, except that this is not core, and you have to localize the analysis. Okay, and that's it. And then the mirror for this is just u v equals to one plus x times one plus y. And you notice that there is no no Kähler parameter here because uh, uh, because there is no holomorphic sphere uh, in this uh, T star S three picture. Right? There is no holomorphic sphere. The holomorphic sphere in in, in x tilde has been contracted. And so, and, and this S3 is Lagrangian instead of holomorphic. Of course, this has odd dimension. And, and, and hence, uh, there is no Kähler parameter here. And so, we don't have any Q here. And you notice that uh, the relation between this equation and this equation is just obtained by letting Q goes to zero. Right? So, we have the picture that uh, for x, um, 
For x tilde, which is the resolution side, if you goes to uh, x, uh, if you goes to curve xt, which is uh, the smoothing side, so this is conical transition. And if you take the mirror, SYZ mirror, by this counting, by T derivative and this counting, then uh, you get the local local mirror, which is uh, uh, which are written there. So you get the mirror. Let's call the mirror uh, to be Y. So when is Y? Uh, um, and uh, okay, and when is Y? Uh, okay, curl Y. That's it. Yeah. So so this is Y. And this is uh, curl Y. Curl Y here. And you notice that indeed it is just letting Q, Q goes to 1. Namely, the sphere has been contracted. So this gives a geometric realization uh, of this uh, physical expansion. So, so of course, uh, this is known by physicists. And uh, using SYZ mirror symmetry, it is rather obvious uh, that we should get this uh, result if we can carry out the SYZ construction. Uh, up to this point, is that clear? And then the middle part is just uh, basically generalizing uh, this kind of picture uh, to uh, 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 toric, uh, other toric cloud manifold. Yeah. So on the T star uh, S3 side, you have the complex structure around the T. Uh, yes, 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 so sure. What yeah. That yeah, because uh, the thing is that uh, we are taking this as synthetic side here. So yeah, the complex geometry is not shown here. Because in the SYZ, we just take this to be synthetic and take that side to be complex. And so this complex parameter T does not show. And if you want to consider that, you, you have to consider like uh, other, like coherent shifts and stability. And so, so that is other parts, which is not shown in this construction. We just focus on the synthetic geometry on this side. Yeah. Okay. And uh, in general, uh, what is the picture? Right. So this is just one example of a toric labial manifold. And in general, uh, you can consider conical transition for general labial. So conical transition for toric labial, general toric labial manifold. And it is the following uh, uh, scheme. So, first of all, you take a polytope, P, so take a polytope, and then you comb over the polytope, and this is the fan picture. I'm describing the fan picture. So, you take a polytope, and then you place that at level one, uh, and you take a cone over this polytope. Basically, so so like just like uh, the previous picture. So let's draw another picture. So you take this hexagon, for example, and then you place that to level one. Uh, yes, only uh, one. Yes, uh, but yeah, indeed we are in general dimension. Although uh, I'm drawing two dimension. <laughs> yeah, it, this this construction can be carried out in any dimension. Yeah. Conical transition in any dimension? Uh, well, we, we call this conical transition, but uh, indeed uh, this one. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. So it must be a conical. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. For this example, it is R3. Yeah. <laughs> so but there is no other. What I mean is, I take a general uh, polytope, and later on you will see I take a, uh, a triangulation of this polytope, and that corresponds to a resolution side. And if you take Minkowski decomposition of this polytope, that corresponds to uh, the smoothing side. And so we can carry out this analog construction for general uh, dimension. Yeah. And of course, it's well. I can just draw two dimensional figures. Is this figure. picture cross the trivial dimension? Huh? Is this picture cross the trivial dimension? Ah uh, yes, uh, you mean you mean placing the portal here? Uh, you mean which which picture? What do you mean by conical transition higher dimension? He's about to explain. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so okay. So we place the portal in uh, level one and take a cone over this uh, take a cone construction, and this is the fan picture for the uh, for the geometry. All right, so this is the fan picture. And of course, this point is singular, and this is a uh, Bernstein canonical singularity. Bernstein canonical singularity. 
And of course, we want to remove this singularity uh, by either doing smoothing or resolution. And, uh, the, uh, and the combinatorial uh, construction is the following. The corresponding combinatorial description is oh, what? Okay, so the corresponding combinatorial construction is given by either doing a triangulation, so do a triangulation, and then you get, uh, for example, well, there are several possible triangulations, so you just choose one. For example, you choose this one. Yeah, so this is one possible triangulation. Uh, so, uh, yeah, one thing I have forgot to say is that uh, it is you have lattice point structure, so you have lattice uh, for this fan picture, right? So you have lattice, and uh, this point top contains integral lattice, and you do a uh, triangulation such that uh, each triangle is a, a simplex, is a standard simplex, all right? So, so you do this kind of triangulation, and that corresponds to smoothing, uh, corresponds to resolution. So this is resolution. And uh, I have denoted uh, to be x tilde, right? Uh, so this is the x picture, <coughs> this is the x tilde picture. And so you get a resolution, yeah. But uh, by doing this uh, triangulation. And uh, another way of doing this, uh, uh, removing this singularity is doing a smooth thing. And that corresponds to Minkowski decomposition. Do you need the some kind of parameter resolution? Uh, yeah, this is Crepin resolution. Yeah, Crepin resolution. This is already Crepin. Yeah. Because this is a Bernstein camera in the dark. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, yeah, you're right. And then uh, you consider a Minkowski decomposition, and that corresponds to another way of removing this singularity. So in this example, uh, there are two Minkowski possible one. Uh, not, not well, indeed more than two, but. Uh, so, uh, so one possible Minkowski decomposition is this one, plus this. Uh, okay, let's uh, draw it in this way. So there are two triangles, right? And you, you, add, you, you add them together. So you notice that this hexagon is swapped by this triangle, um, uh, wait, up, perhaps up. Let's see. Uh, well, let's draw the figure correctly. <laughs> yeah, let's see which one. Oh, because I'm drawing on the other way, so let's. Uh, okay, so let's uh, draw it in this way. Of course, they are just <laughs> the same, but uh, I'm using this figure. All right, so uh, you notice that this triangle. Yeah. Uh, ah, I see. I'm okay. I'm using this way. It's just the same. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, do this Minkowski decomposition. So you notice that uh, this triangle, uh, if you move to this side, then it becomes this one, and uh, yeah, and this triangle. So so this hexagon can be swapped by all uh, these two triangles by moving the triangles around, and that is Minkowski decomposition. Minkowski decomposition. Yeah. And then, uh, and uh, of course, there's some other Minkowski, possible Minkowski demonstration. So, like, uh, if you move uh, this, uh, yeah, uh, okay, you can also move uh, these three lines around to get uh, this hexagon. So, so you have uh, uh, some other ways of doing Minkowski demonstration that is not unique, and that corresponds to uh, smoothing. So that corresponds to smoothing of this. Uh, uh, for instance, canonical singularity. So, so that well, it is not a map, but uh, let's also treat as a map. So this is smoothing, <coughs> yeah, of this singularity, uh, and uh, it is the re indeed uh, this construction is uh, by Ottman. This very in interesting cor uh, correspondence between Minkowski decomposition and uh, smoothing is by Ottman. So this correspondence is by Ottman. 
And basically, uh, the, the construction is rather canonical. You just uh, take these uh, tri uh, take these uh, pieces, strata of the Minkowski decomposition, and then you uh, you place that to a, a higher dimension and do the cone, uh, take a cone. So, uh, so roughly speaking, it is. Uh, so let's call these pieces to be R i. So the construction is basically like uh, taking cone of R i times E i. So this is in high dimension, and to, you take a cone. And uh, 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 yeah, here I'm, I'm just roughly talking about this construction. But uh, yeah, this is the key. And uh, you take the cone, and then you uh, project that to uh, C, let's say P plus 1, uh, mod uh, C spanned by 1. So, uh, uh, so here it is union of these pieces. So I is from 0 to P. Let's say, all right. So that, for example, if you have two pieces, then I is from zero to one, and P here is just two. Uh, P is just one, yeah. And uh, and then you you have this projection, and this is the smoothing. So when uh, so this is the uh, the family map. So this is uh, so this is the T map. So T let's say T uh, T one minus T zero up to T P plus one minus T zero. Let's say. Yeah. And this is the uh, correspondence between the Minkowski in position and this uh, smooth family. Yeah. So the smoothings are always one dimensional? Uh, no, 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 no. The dimension one is this P. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a high dimensional family. Yeah. It is, depends on the number of pieces of the uh, strata. In, in, in the two examples of Minkowski compositions, the dimensions yes. themselves are different. So yeah. does that mean the the number of parameters. Yeah, they yeah, are different. Yeah. Yeah. For example, this is one di so this gives you one dimensional smoothing, one, one dimensional family of smoothing, and this gives you two dimensional family. So P equals to two P. Yeah. Okay. You have minus one means. <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. P might yeah, because uh, <laughs> I, I is from zero to P. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, let's consider uh, uh, the the Lagrangian vibration now because we are doing. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh, uh, so perhaps uh, I should uh, I should just point out the key point and stop. And so um, and so the key point is that each strata of this Minkowski decomposition corresponds to a plane in the Lagrangian vibration to the wall of the Lagrangian vibration. So for example, uh, you have two uh, triangles here, and that corresponds to uh, uh, this discriminant locus, and this triangle corresponds to this discriminant locus. And uh, so for example, in this case, uh, you have two walls, and uh, you can again decompose uh, the, the uh, you, you can write down the corresponding wall crossing factor uh, of, of the of the uh, of the uh, 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 quantum correction, and that is, for example, given by uh, let's say one plus uh, x, one plus uh, x plus y inverse, and one is uh, one plus uh, x inverse plus y. It is just uh, given by the lattice points of the triangles, and that gives you the mirror to be U V equals to one plus x plus y inverse times uh, one plus x inverse plus y. And uh, so you see that uh, uh, you see that uh, by uh, going from the resolution to the smoothing side, uh, it corresponds to polynomial factorization basically. And so uh, yeah, sorry, uh, because I don't have time, I have to be very rough. And so uh, what I want to say is that uh, S Y Z gives you a classical picture of uh, uh, well of uh, Minkowski decomposition of polytope of portal and factorization of polynomial of polynomial polynomial and, and uh, so this classical correspondence is given by Newton but we have another understanding using SYZ and so perhaps another title for this talk uh, is uh, Newton is SYZ <laughs> for Newton and SYZ Okay, uh, perhaps uh, uh, I, I should stop here. Thank you very much. Thanks.
Newton particle. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is the correspondence. So given a polynomial, you take the Newton particle. Oh, this is exactly what I mean, ah, yeah. So oh, okay. you take the Newton particle of a polynomial, and factorization of that polynomial corresponds to the decomposition of the Newton particle. Okay. And so S Y and this is realized by SYZ construction, so Newton is SYZ. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again. Yeah, thank you.